I started something on last Sunday and I'm going to continue it on today. Second Chronicles chapter number seven. Look at verses 12 through 14. And the Lord appeared. Are you there? Are you there? If you're not there, say amen. I'll wait just a few more minutes. Second Chronicles. Not Corinthians. If you're over there by Acts. And, yeah. yeah, if you're right. If you're over there. If you see Galatians, go, go left, young man. <laughs> Second Chronicles chapter number 7, verse number 12. And the Lord appeared unto Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place, God Almighty, to myself for an house of sacrifice. I want you to hear the next two verses because there's where I would try to preach my behind off. Yes, sir. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and stop with all this foolishness. Y'all better pray for me because I feel an anointing upon me here. Then, say that as loud as you can, say then. Then will I hear from heaven. Watch the balance of the text. And will forgive their sin. And heal, watch this, their land. Y'all missed that right there. Y'all missed that. We've said the land. But little girl, he didn't say the land. He said their land. I dare you to touch anybody and tell them God is about to heal your land. He's about to heal your land. Maybe, maybe you're standing by the wrong person. And, because anointing begets anointing. Anointing destroys Greg and breaks yokes, but just in case, test the waters and tell two people near you, tell them God is about to heal the land, your land, your land, your land. <laughs> tell them one more time, tell them God is about to heal your land, he's about to heal. If my people which are called by my name would humble themselves and pray. The title of my message is When the Righteous Pray. Father in Jesus name we pray amen. You may be seated. I want you to hear me now. Let them all in, please. Let's get as many in as we possibly can. If we have to, we have some of the gentlemen to stand. This is Kim. St remain standing real quick and wave your hand. This is the other person you need to see after service. She thought I was going to bust her. But she's the other person you need to see for the tickets, although she's late coming to church. Back to my message. She... She was late. I saw when she came in. I believe, I believe 
I believe because of the religious components of who we are and who we've become, we have by our own doing diluted in the mind and in the spirit the power of prayer. The power of prayer. And our quest to become, to arrive, to reach the pinnacle of what we desire to be, accomplishments, we have lost sight of an important component to Christian living, the power of prayer. power of prayer. The effectiveness of prayer. The productivity of prayer. The fruitfulness of prayer. June, the capacity of prayer. I said to you on last week, Baz repeating old school saints put it like this, prayer changes things. Yeah. Capacity of prayer. The result of prayer. Prayer will bring you results. Especially fervent prayer. Not this quickie. Now I lay me down to sleep. Pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake. Pray the Lord my soul to take. And that is the apex of your prayer. Fervent prayer is when you get down before God and you don't get up until you get an answer. Yeah. Until you feel something in your spirit that God is about to bring it to pass. And I know it's about, not about a feeling, but sometimes God will let you feel it. The capacity of prayer. The purpose of prayer. The outcome of prayer. The after the math of prayer. The lethality of prayer. The lethality of prayer. I'm looking at some of your faces now. Like what that is. <laughs> the lethality of prayer. The lethality. The capacity to cause death. A serious harm or damage. Some of us need to pray fervently because there's some stuff we've been dealing with. It needs to die. I'm going to preach in a minute. It needs to die. It needs to die. There are, certain, there are certain things that's been haunting and plaguing your life. And it don't need to live another day. This may sound a little harsh to you, but there are some things I needed to end, and I don't need it to end tomorrow. I need it to end today. Certain things that's plaguing your mind and your thought processes, certain things that's plaguing your heart, things that happened to you years ago, and it's yet haunting your life. The devil is a liar. It's time for it to die. Do something for me real quick and look at somebody and tell them, I need some things to die. To die. Certain spirits that's trying to captivate my mind, I need it to die. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Certain spirits that's wreaking havoc in my thought processes, it needs to die. I am determined I'm not going to live the rest of my life being plagued by certain things, certain thoughts, certain perspectives, 
Am I in the house yet? It needs to die. It needs to die. And at the bare minimum, through your prayer, you need to inflict some serious harm to it. If you ain't gonna die, I'm gonna mess you up. Yeah. Like being in a real good fight. They didn't kill you, but you felt like that. Yeah. You know, you, you feel half dead. Your arm is laying over there. And you... mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. That guy threatened me. And, uh, you know, he was a little bit larger than I was. And, and uh, you know, I'm not a scary person. I'm not a big guy, but, you know, I may run, but I'm going to get me a stick. When I get that stick, I let, let, let's do this. The stick, the stick go even it up. You, know? mm -hmm. you might whoop me, but you're going to know you've been in a fight. And some things you need to deal with it. Yeah, you might get a little bit of me, but you're going to know you've been in a fight. Hallelujah. And I think that's the mindset that many of us need to have when it's fighting our enemy. Devil, you're going to know you've been in a fight. I think it's important that not only do we understand the effectiveness of prayer and the productivity of prayer and the fruitfulness of prayer and the capacity, the purpose, the result, the outcome, all of that, the lethality of prayer. I think it's important that we're going to understand the nuances of prayer. We need to understand also the genesis and the origin of prayer. Listen to this now. Prayer was mankind expressing dominion on the earth by giving God the freedom and the liberty to intervene in earth's affairs. Yes. Prayer invites God into your business. Yes. And I know, I know that you're intellectually prowess. I understand that. I get it. But I need God all up in my business. I need God leading me. I need God guiding me. I need God speaking to me. I need God ordering my steps. I need God directing my path. I am not that smart. Maybe you're much smarter than me. I am not that smart. I'm not that intellectual. I don't have that much going on. I need God to order my steps. I need God all up in my business. Prayer was an expression of man's unity and relationship with God. You talking to God, us talking to God, us praying to God is a sign of our relationship to God. You don't have a problem talking to somebody you have relationship with. You want to talk to somebody you have relationship with. I don't, I don't struggle to get on my face before God. I don't struggle to get on my knees before God. I don't struggle to talk to God because I love him. And he loves me. I love our affair. That may sound a little raunchy, but I love my affair with God. I absolutely love him. I, absolutely, I love talking to him. He's my main man. You can say whatever you want to about that. I love, I love God. I love God. I love God. All of the, the, the guys up in here, they're so macho that you can't say you love God. I love, I absolutely love. I love him. I, I love him. I, I love him. I love him. Come with him. I love him. I love him. Oh, I love him. I love him. Everybody in the room that truly love God and know he loves you, trust him. I say, I love me some God. I I love talking to him in the morning. I love talking to him in the noonday. I love talking to him late at night I, when everybody's going to sleep. I love talking to him riding down the street in my car. I, I love, matter of fact, I go in the bathroom my job and talk to him. I, I talk to him. Y'all go make me preach up in there. Every lover of God look at somebody and say, I love me some God. I love me some God. I, I absolutely love me some God. And he loves me. Every now and then when I'm going through something, he'll walk up in the room where I am and wrap his loving arms around me and say, I got you. Y'all go make me preach up in here. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. You never had him to wrap his arms around you and, and love on you a little bit. But everybody that know what I'm talking about, look at somebody and say, God loves me. God, I was going through something last week and, and God stepped in the situation with me and said, I got you. I got your back. You're not going. The devil ain't going to defeat you. Whatever. He's rising up again. I got you, baby. I got you. <laughs> 
want anybody that may be going through something to know the loving arm of Jesus taps somebody on the shoulder and say, he got you, boy. He got you, girl. He, he got you. He, the devil is not going to defeat you. He's not going to destroy you. He's not going to kill you. You're not going to lose your mind. You're not going to go crazy. God got you. If you know what I'm talking about, shake a hand like you're about to shake it up and say, he got you. Somebody needs to know that, Sherelle. Somebody needs to know that. God sent me to tell somebody in this place today, he got you. Hallelujah. He got you, Marsha. He got you. He got you. How dare you to tell your neighbor, God got you. Prayer, 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 prayer. Gonna reach over and slap Keith and say, He got us, 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 he got us. Will you tell three people, He got us, he got us, he got us, he, he got us. Don't get nervous, don't be perplexed, don't be in despair. God got you. Matter of fact, God said, I just heard him say, He said, Matter of fact, I'm about to show somebody I got him. My God, be seated, be seated, be seated, be seated, be seated. Prayer, prayer, prayer. 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 You don't even know it. But if you pray right now, God will deliver you. God will bring you out. Say it. Say it. Say it. Prayer. 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 Prayer, prayer. For the Bible said, men ought to always pray and not faint. Tell three people and say, pray, pray, pray. Prayer, 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 prayer. Be seated, church. Prayer is the expressed, the expressed involvement of one's whole self with God. Hear this now. Prayer is the express involvement. I'm about to lose it up here. Prayer is about the express involvement. Why don't you roll back up here no more? You gonna make me have a fit up in here. I just heard the Holy Ghost tell me when he rolled up here, he told me to tell somebody, he said he's about to roll up on you. He's, woo, he's about to, God said he's about to roll up on you. God said he's about to roll up on your business. He's about to roll up in your company. He's about to roll up in your money. He's about to roll up in your body. He's about to roll up in your heart. He's about to roll up in somebody. Give God a praise for rolling up on you. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, God said, give him a praise now because he's about to roll up in your business. Wait a minute, Brother Philip. I want somebody to give him a crazy praise like he just rolled up on you. My God. Prayer. Prayer, 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 prayer. We see the church. I got to get to the text. 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 I'm trying to get to the text. But God has decided to interrupt the text and grant somebody a miracle. My God. Prayer. 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 We see the church if you can. Prayer is the method. Prayer is the method by which prayer is the method by which we as his created be seated his created being commune 
with the invisible God. Prayer is a method by which we commune with the invisible God. Prayer is a method that God allows us as human beings to enter it into the spirit realm and call things out of the spirit realm into the earthen realm. Call things that be not as though they were. There's wealth in heaven. I call out of heaven right now the blessings of God to be over this congregation. I speak now that the members of this congregation shall be the lenders and not the borrowers, shall be the head and not the tail, shall be above and not beneath, shall be the healed, shall be the righteous. Prayer, 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 prayer is the announcement. Listen to this. Prayer is the announcement of our trust in the power of our God. Prayer is the announcement of our trust in the power of our God. We don't pray for naught. We pray because we trust and believe in the power of our God. I don't pray to some statue or some image. I don't pray to Buddha. I pray to the true and the living God. I pray to the God that all gods will bow their knee to. I don't pray, listen to this, I don't pray to a God. I pray to the God. The true and the living God. And I pray to him because I trust him. I, I, I trust him. I trust that when I pray that God is going to respond to my prayers. I don't pray out of ritualism. I don't pray. I don't pray out of tradition. I don't pray because I'm being requested to pray. I pray because I truly trust. Watch this. And my trust is weird because I trust him when he does it. But I also trust him. See, that sounds crazy. That's, that sounds weird. That sounds off the beaten path of one's thinking. But I don't pray. I don't pray because of all the things that he's done and all the things uh, that he's, he's brought to pass in my life. I pray even for the things that he has not brought to pass. I trust him. I trust some things uh, he didn't bring to pass because I didn't need it. I trust him to give me what I need, not just what I want. I trust him. I pray to God. And I, I, I request you all the single people to pray. And ask God to give you the person. And if you don't give, let me, let, let me leave that alone. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, yeah because you don't want you, you don't, if it. Ain't, if he ain't for you, just, you know. Food for thought, food for thought. If she ain't for you, food for thought, food for thought. So if, if she may be fine, but can't cook nothing. I mean, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they got to get, yeah, I, I mean, because we'll burn a cracker. <laughs> Don't know how you burn a cracker, you know. You in there kind of trying to cook a cracker. Boy, it's quiet up in here. You, you in there trying to cook, mother cook a cracker. I'm sorry, I've, I've gotten off. Let me get back on. Prayer is the announcement of our trust in the power of our God. Prayer is the expression of man's what's the dependency upon God. I pray because, hear me now, I depend upon God. Can't make it by myself, Deb. Can't make it by myself. Talk, David Earl. Can't make it by myself. I depend upon God. I depend upon God. I depend upon God. Can I work this a minute? I depend upon God. Oh, I got to work this side, this side, getting it. I depend upon God. I see a feeling over here. I can't feel it. I depend upon God. 
I'm going to labor with this a minute. I depend upon God. Oh, Bobby, I depend upon God. I, I can't make it. I can't make it. I, I can't, I'm not that strong. I depend upon God. Say it a little bit more, David Earl. I depend upon God. I'm, I de like you depend upon drugs, I depend upon God. I depend upon God. Like you depend upon your doctor, I depend upon God. Like you depend upon your girlfriend or boyfriend, I depend upon God. Like you depend upon your husband or your wife, I want everybody to be here uh, that depend upon God. Will you tell anybody and you tell them, I depend on God. God is like a good insurance policy. It's better to have him and not need him than to need him and not have him. Will you tell two people one more time, tell them, I depend upon God. I, don't get it twisted. Got a little money in the bank, doing pretty good. Got a pretty good job and all of that, but I depend upon God. Got a man that loves me and take care of me, but I depend upon the God. I got a wife that loves me, loves the, 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 the bottom of my feet, but I still depend upon God. Tell somebody real quick, tell them I got a good praying job, but I depend upon God. If they fired me tomorrow, I depend upon God. If they gave me a pink slip tomorrow, I depend. My trust is not in this job. My trust is in. Will you do something for me and look down your road and say, I depend upon God. Would have made it this far. Would have died along the way. Would have lost it. But I depend upon be seated let me talk a little more not my salary yes, sir. Yes, sir. not my position yes, sir. that's fleeting I depend upon God I depend upon God prayer I I pray because, Felicia, I depend upon God. Do something for me and mean it when you say it, hopefully. Look at somebody and tell them, I got a little money in the bank, but really, really, really. really. Yeah. See, y'all ain't real here tonight, yeah? Really. Yeah, I... I no, no, tell me once now, really, really, I, 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 got a, I, got, I got something in the bank. It ain't a whole lot, but, but, but my trust ain't in my bank account. My trust is not in my bank account. My trust is in the God that blessed me to put it in the bank account. Everybody that knows that you know that you know what I'm talking about, jump on your feet and say, I trust in God. You roll down here one more time, I'm gonna push you against that wall. Boy, you ain't hurt me today. Do something for me real quick. Everybody that's expecting God to roll up in your prison, I want you to shake it and say, God is about to roll up in my house. Prayer. 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 Woo! Prayer. Woo! Prayer. Woo! Prayer. Somebody real quick, repeat these words and Father in the name of Jesus. I thank you now for your power. I thank you now for your anointing. I thank you now for being the God of my life. I ask you now, God, uh, to roll up in my business. Uh, handle your business. Uh, show forth your power. Let your glory be revealed. Uh, God, I believe so uh, in what you're about to do. Uh, I'm not going to wait till you do it uh, to give you a praise. Uh, I praise you in advance uh, for everything you're about to do, uh, for every door you're about to open. For Praise it now. 
for every way that's about to be made. I praise you for what you're about to do in my house, what you're about to do in my marriage, what you're about to do in my children. Say amen. Say amen. Say amen. Say amen. amen. If you believe it and receive it, tell five people, tell them it is so, it is so, it is so, it is so. Tell somebody it is so by the power of the living God, it is so. And so, and so, and so, the text says, Be seated. The text says, Y'all give me a little more time. I need some more time. We've done everything else. We got to get this word today. Listen to what he said, Keith. He said, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. If I should allow a drought. If I should decide to send a drought. In the midst of my people, yes. nothing coming in. The levee is dry. I know some of y'all can identify because you're always flowing in it. Well, there are some folk in this room beside me. No, you can walk with God and He will allow a drought. Brother Philip, nothing coming in. Nothing. Well, my real people. I, I mean, I mean, praising, worshiping, giving God glory, and a drought. I mean, a drought from paycheck to paycheck. Sometimes it's already spent. You ain't even got it yet. Woo, if I had a few real people up in here. I mean, you ain't even got your check. And it's already gone. You haven't even cashed it. And it's already somebody else's money. A drought. A drought. And you still have the nerve to give him a praise. <laughs> Sheila, a trout. With a smile on your face in the midst of a drought. With a praise of the Lord on your lips in the midst there of a drought. Anybody in this room that halfway know what the preacher's talking about, say, man, I know where you're coming from. A trout. Be seated. I mean a drought. Wondering how in God's heaven am I going to get out of this mess? And it appears that the God you serve is nowhere to be found. A drought. It appears that you're praying for naught. A drought. Drought. I mean, you pray to him and stuff get worse instead of better. Let me go back to my notes. I, I done lost my church. I, I've, 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 lost, I've lost most of the church. I mean, you're praying to him and as opposed to getting better, it get worse. He said, if I, if I, if I shut up heaven, that, that there be no rain. And, and if I command, watch this, the locusts to devour the land. Not only is nothing coming in, 
Watch this. That that you do have. The money that you do have. Seems like it's been eaten away. You're trying to rob Peter to pay Paul. I mean, you just spent what you had to pay the rent. And the car break down, you know. Let me work to you. You walk around your house like. You come to church and it's time to give him praise. I praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because you're looking at the preacher. I'm praising you, but I'm praising just because you're telling me to praise him. So right now, I ain't got too much to praise him for. Let me go back. Let me go back. Cause, yeah, because I free you. I mean, if I command the locusts to devour it. If I command circumstances and situations to eat at it. You've abided in faith. But he's allowed the locusts, circumstances, situation, trial, test to eat away at your faith. Boy, I'm working this thing up to eat away at your faith. You know you believe God. You know you trust God. You know you have faith in the power of his word. But circumstances, situations, hardship, pain, disappointment has eaten away at it. I'm trying to. You still got a praise. You still got a, a glory. But circumstances is eating away at it. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, the command of the Lord is If I send pestilence, pestilence in the midst of my people, not just in the world, come in the house of God, cancer in your body. Generation of curses eating away at your livelihood, eating away at your psyche. Pestilence, sickness. You make a check, but that joke is sick. Boy, I'm, I'm telling you, oh, I'm, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You make a check, but your check need a doctor. Your check right now need to go through emergency right now. <laughs> Y'all crew, they, there's fools right here. <laughs> they up here trying to resuscitate their check. <laughs> Pray for me. I know that's not everybody, but some of us in here know what I'm talking about. If you know what I'm talking about, just wave your hand at the preachers. Huh? Jesus Christ. We need a healing service. <laughs> Lord have mercy. We need a, we need a healing and deliverance service. We need a revival. <laughs> we need a come to Jesus moment. Watch the text. I'm getting ready to hit that suck in the eye. Watch the text, Brenda. If I send pestilence amongst my people, the only thing you need to do, church, if my people, which are called by my name, 
Every person in this room that's proud to be called a child of God, jump on your feet and give him a praise because you're glad about it. Come on, Gregory. I want the people who are proud to be called by his name to give him a praise. No, no, no. Don't you give him an important praise. Don't you give him some sophisticated praise. Don't you give him some high-minded praise. Open your mouth right now and give your God a praise because you're called by his name. Be seated one more time. you to understand something for the balance of your life your saved life that the name of our God is attached to our name so my situation don't have to just reckon with me my circumstance got to reckon with me and what I'm attached to I have been called by his name. I'm here today because when I was living in the decadence of sin and hell thought that I was going to spend eternity in the boundaries of hell. I got a call one night while I was high. I'm talking about the preacher. I had just left the dope house. Got me a little reefer. I don't care about y'all. Got me a little reefer. Went to the party. I wish y'all would look at me like that. Yeah, yeah, like, like you ain't never had a, a joint. Some of you got a bag in the car right now. Let's go. Tell somebody, I say, he must be talking about you. You got quiet on that bag part. I, I, had, just, I had just left. Nobody yeah. went by party. You know, walk up and party, you know, it's choo choo, cool, you know. <laughs> that my dope days, you know. It wasn't David, they didn't know about they know about choo choo. Can I walk just a minute? Y'all yeah. not gonna be offended. No. I don't care if y'all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't care if y'all. I'm trying to help you. I'm not trying to impress you, I'm trying to help you. And Chris, I, I walk in the party, you know, cool after I saw you were dancing, giving my my own, oh, you know, you know, I did when you're cool, you know. Yeah. <laughs> And that's my mother-in-law. She looked at me like, <laughs> had my daughter up in there. So did. <laughs> so did that. Eh? <laughs> me and your daughter were throwing down over there. You know? <laughs> and, 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 and I, I walked about the party and something calls me. In the form of a young lady who was that a witness to the people coming out to party? She said, you, do you know Jesus? And I cussed her out. Some of y'all are still cussing now, so don't even try it. At least I don't cuss no more, you know what I mean? Ooh, y'all. <laughs> I hate for raising hand all the yet cussers because after I saw what I saw a few minutes ago, I better not ask. <laughs> and son, I, I walked out and she said, do you know the Lord? And I, I cussed out. But she stayed with me. She said, the Lord is calling you. The Lord is calling you, young man. 
I cuss some more. I said, if you don't get your blanket at blank, fill in the blank self out of my. But the call got me. When she looked at me, Mother Shaw, she said, but if you died tonight, where would you open your eyes? Oh, I really start cussing now. Oh, I went to work. I used words I didn't know I had. I made up words. But I got home. Yes, sir. And the high wolf. And I thought about what she said. And I didn't have an answer. And the call had impacted me so that I prayed. Yes, sir. I prayed and I told God, I don't know what being saved is really about. But if there be such a thing, will you save me? The prayer and the call made me do what the balance of the text said that we should do. It made me humble myself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It made me humble myself. Yeah. For all of us, and I'm about to close. That's it. They're still fighting and wrestling. Man, humble yourself. Under the mighty hand of God, humble yourself. Yes, sir. Who do you think you are, dude? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God don't have to have you. You need God. Yes, God don't have to bend his, his will or bend his word to you. He's God if you believe in him or not. He's God if you obey him or not. Son, if you never say yes to God, he's still on the throne. Can I get an amen up in here? Humble yourself, girl. I'm not ready. Well, he can get you ready. God can deal with you in such a way you'll make a three days journey in a day. Ask Jonah. The Bible said that Jonah, when God finished, he cried out, not from the belly of a whale, he cried out from the belly of hell. Tell anybody that knew you, tell them, God know how to bring you to the cross. Who are you, girl? Who are you? Say yes before AIDS gets you. Come on, come on, get you. Say yes before cancer gets you. Say yes before all these bad decisions destroy you. Say yes. And contrary to any system, contrary to anything out of the world, Christy, God can deliver you from drugs. God can remove the crack cocaine out of your system. Take the very desire of it out of your being. Humble yourself, girl. 
I'd rather see you walk to the altar than we roll you to the altar. I'm through. I want the person in this room who know you need today to humble yourself and come to this altar and ask God to be the Lord of your life. Get out that seat and come right now. Come on. Come on. Come on. All over this building. All over this building. Black, white. Woman, girl, boy. Doesn't matter. That's the boy that you need to come. Come closer, gentlemen. There you go. Come on, get out of the seat. If you're sitting next to somebody that you feel are contemplating, tell them, I'll walk down there with you. Come on, that's it. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Get out of those seats. Where, where's the praying people? What's going on? Where are my intercessors? Where are my intercessors? Get out of your seat and come to this altar. Don't you continue to allow Satan to have free range in your life. Come on. Get out of that seat. Come to this altar. Softly, Greg. There you go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Lord sent this word and tailored it just for you. Humble yourself and come to this altar now. We're going on. There are two men that are sitting here today. Come on, little girl. That's it. There are two men, Eugene, that are sitting here today, one on this side and one on this side. And gentlemen, God told me to tell you today to humble yourself and come to him. One is on this side and one is on this side. And God told me to tell you, sir, humble yourself today and come to this altar because this might be your last time and I'm not trying to scare you I don't play that that's it there's one on this side there's one on this side sir if I were you I would get out of my seat and humble myself and come to the Lord today he said Today, he said. Somebody in this room, would you please give the Lord. Oh, come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come even closer right here. Come closer. Come closer. There you go. Come closer. Come closer. Come closer. Come closer. I want some of these elders and preachers, would you build a fence or wall behind them? Come on. Ministers, they'll just, you don't have to even lay hands. I just, all I want you to do is build a shield behind them. Come on. Everyone that came to this altar today, I want you to lift your hands to God right now.
time. It's time. Doing your thing. It's time to give your whole being to God. So God can use your life the way He desires to use it. Tell me if I'm wrong. It's time. Satan wants you dead. Yes, sir. He don't want to just harm you. He want you dead. This decision you're making today is going to be the difference between life and death. Lift your hands high. Let me tell you something, son. Let me tell you. Please don't make the mistake of many and think this is about some emotional thing. It's not. It's not you feeling some emotional something from God to know that you've received salvation. This is all about the heart. For the Bible says that man, look at this. But God looks at this. God looks on the heart. And if from your heart, you truly mean this, then he will save you. And he will wash you. And he will cleanse you. And he will take his word and grow you. And develop you. And teach you how to walk in his ways. Teach you how to become the righteousness of him. Change and transform your life in such a way. That people will have a hard time ever rem remembering you. For the man or the woman you used to be. Ask us how we know. You know how we know? You don't even know this. But many of us now, Elder Blair, many of us now, we used to be y'all. A few years ago, we were you. Literally, we were you. Not hypothetically, we were you. In the condition that you're in, in the state that you're in, in the mind, we were you. Try to imagine or visualize us being y'all. Fact is, we used to be y'all. And God took his word and transformed us. For you to even think or imagine that it can't be done for you is a lie from the pits of hell. So lift your hands. We're going to pray for you and pray with you. Lift your hands. Close your eyes, if you will. Father, in the name of Jesus, pray with me, church. Point your hand this way. If you know the power of prayer, point your hand this way. So Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you now for every person here. Every person that came to this altar desiring for Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior of their life. God, in Jesus' name, I pray you begin the process of transformation. Transform them into the express image of you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, wash them in your blood. Cleanse them by your power. Let your word transform their life. In Jesus' name we pray. And God, we thank you now for new creatures in Christ Jesus. We thank you now for the saved of the Lord, for the redeemed of the Lord, for the righteousness of the Lord. We thank you now, God, in your holy name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And if you meant that, give the Lord a hand praise for saving you. Now I'm going to let you go, but let me tell you what's important. What's important? Going forward, now you need to come to the house of God and hear this is brother Patrick he's my assistant he's one of the elders at this church we talk about this all the time how God's word
has made us the men we are today. How God's word can make you a man of God. A woman of God. You come to the house of God. I know you got Christians that they become comfortable and common with God. They become relaxed and lackadaisical in terms of their commitment to the church. Mistake. You don't run away from God. You run to God. Come to church every chance you get. My commitment to you, if you come to this church, would be to honestly go before God and ask God to give me a word that will feed you, that will strengthen you, that will help you, that will make you better. I do not take it lightly. I can't speak for any other pastor, and I know there's some great pastors in our country. I'm talking about this pastor. I want to teach you how to become a child of God. Go now, and the Lord be with you. Give the Lord a big hand, everybody. God bless you. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Somebody in this room that can appreciate what just happened, give the Lord a hand.